change the pressure of the substance uh, usually a gas by the reducing the volume of the substance compressor consists of two components which one is power source second one is compressing mechanism uh, for example is piston vein and etc where is the compressor located is the compressor and condenser of the air cooling system found in home uh, and building are usually outside the outside the house in a car uh, the compressor is found in the engine bay and powered by the drive valve connected to the crank shaft of the engine so what is the factor of the compressor is it consists of four factors of the performance of compressor the first one is speed of rotation the second one is pressure of suction the third one is pressure of the discharge and the fourth one is the type of refrigerant being used let's move on to the next one check it out it receives cold low pressure gas which is compressed into a high pressure high temperature gas and pump out of the discharge side of the compressor and flow into the condenser this high pressure high temperature gas is shown as red with the bubble indicating it is in gas state the condenser is just that cool air flow across the condenser cooling the high temperature high pressure gas turning into a high pressure liquid as you can see the gas remain red high pressure but the change to arrow indicating it changed to a liquid the high pressure liquid flow through the receiver dryer having a desiccant can back inside it to the filter and absorb a small amount of the moisture that may contaminate the refrigerant. On the AC system using an orifice tube, the receiver dryer is replaced with an anacrometer which is located between the evaporator and the compressor. The high side service port is located here between the condenser and the expansion valve or orified tube. Next, this high pressure liquid passes through the expansion valve allowing it to expand and to turn into a low pressure liquid as indicated in our color change from red to blue. This low pressure liquid flow from the expansion valve directly into the evaporator at which point it begins to boil and turn back into a low pressure gas. Absorbing heat as it does, so it chills the wall of the evaporator and the blower motor pushes this air through the vehicle dashboard van. As you can see, the liquid arrow turned back into a gas as indicated by bubbles. The low side service port is located here between the expansion valve and the compressor. The low pressure gas then returns to the compressor for another cycle. A number of car manufacturers start using a thermal expansion valve or a TXV to make the air conditioner operator more efficiently and give better cooling. The TXV system as shown in our diagram has a small temperature bulb located at the outlet of the evaporator which continually adjusts the refrigerant flow through the expansion valve and into the evaporator based on the evaporator temperature and pressure. Because the evaporator outlet temperature is used to regulate the TXV valve, it sets a maximum operating pressure at the evaporator outlet it, and then it flow through the low side service port where in many cases is being measured by low side gauge only to charge the system as refrigerant is added the pressure on the low side rise until it reaches its maximum operating pressure which is typically 35 psi or lower if this pressure level is below the gauge established correct field which is typically over 35 psi even through the system is fully charged adding additional refrigerant will not show on the low side pressure gauge but will build up on the high side and can only be measured by a high side gauge. In these cases, 
using only a low side gauge can potentially cause too much refrigerant to be added and result in damage to the compressor or other problem associated. Okay, so this is the question one. A steady flow compressor is used to compress helium from 15 PSIA and 70 degree Farad at the inlet to 200 PSIA and 600 Farad at the outlet. The outlet area and velocity are 0 0.01 feet square and 100 feet per second respectively and inlet velocity is 50 feet per second. Determine the mass flow rate and inlet area. Okay, uh, if they say about a steady flow, we say it's at zero. But if it didn't say that it have a steady flow or what, but it said a compressor or what, so we just assume that it's at zero. So, uh, and instead of compress the helium, helium which is we assume it as an ideal gas. So helium has their own ideal gas. We can search it on the table properties, which is temperature for the critical and the pressure for critical. Let me show you. Okay, for the helium critical point, the temperature critical is is nine point five degree Fahrenheit. And the pressure for critical helium is 33.2 PSIA. This is for helium. Okay, because we said that the mass flow rate is zero, equals to zero, so we assume M1 equals to M2. And then we all know that M equals to A. V is for the velocity and another V is for the specific volume. So for M1, we assume that it's A1 V1 over V1 equals to M2 is A2 V2 over V2. Okay, we, can, we know that 
PV equals to RT. So from V, which is velocity, we can get RT over P, which is for the V2. We say V2 equals to R T2 over P2. Okay, from the from the given, we can assume we can get that M mass flow rate for two mass flow rate equals to E2 V2 T2 over R T2, which is I put that velocity. This is velocity. I put this formula into this, so we get this. Okay, from the question, we all know that we have a two, v two, p two, and t two. R is R is already given, which is R equals to two point six eight o nine psi a feet per cube over pound R. Okay. So we just directly put it on the formula, which is E2 is from the question we got 0 0.01 feet square. V2 we got 100 feet per second. And for pressure, to, for 2, 200 psi E over R is 2.6. 0.6809 psi e fd cube over pound r times with temperature is 1059.7 r so we get 0 0.0704 pound per second okay from that we got m which is mass flow rate 0 0.0704 pound per second so we we already know that mass equals to a1 v1 over v1 which is velocity and the specific volume okay we, we know that z, we know that mass flow rate already no, known so we we want to know about a1 which is inlet inlet for the compressor helium so again v1 pv i mean pv equals to rt so we got v equals to rt over p so again we put it on the velocity we got a1 v1 p1 over rt1 mass flow rate okay okay from the formula we want to know about A1 which is inlet for compressor helium. So A1 equals to mass flow rate times R T1 over V1 P1. Okay, from the question, we got all of this. R is given already and so we just put it on the formula. Mass flow rate 0 0.0704 times with 2.6 Take on nine times five two nine point seven over fifty times fifteen. So use your calculator and we got zero point one three three feet per square. This is the inlet and we got the answer for inlet and best for it. Helium gas flowing at 60 kg per minute is compressed in a compressor from 105 kilopascal and 215 Kelvin to 700 kilopascal and 460 Kelvin. 15 kJ of heat is lost during this process for, for each kg of helium passing through the compressor. Determine the power required by the compressor, assuming the changes in kinetic potential energies are negligible. given from the question um, that we want to search um, we want to find is w um, w dot e which is power required for that system uh, the equation is e in equal to e out um, w 
the meat